Ciao, mabuhay. You are watching The Word Exposed. Let us behold Jesus, the Word incarnate, revealing Himself to us in the Sunday readings. We are on the 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Today's Gospel narrates an event after the miraculous multiplication of five barley loaves and two fish that fed about 5,000 men, not counting women and children. St. Matthew tells us that after this, Jesus asked His disciples to get into the boat and precede Him to the other side of the sea. Then He went up on the mountain by Himself to pray. Far from shore, the boat of the disciples was tossed by the wind and waves. The Lord then came toward them walking on the sea. They thought it was a ghost. So Peter said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Peter was indeed able to walk on the water toward Jesus. But the strong wind frightened him and he sank. Friends, winds and waves will come. But let us learn from Peter's experience. Keep our eyes fixed on the Lord as we travel on stormy seas. And even when sinking, cry out to Jesus, Lord, save me, save me from my little faith. First reading, a reading from the first book of Kings. At the mountain of God, Horeb, Elijah came to a cave where he took shelter. Then the Lord said to him, Go outside and stand on the mountain before the Lord. The Lord will be passing by. A strong and heavy wind was rending the mountains and crushing rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, there was fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire, there was a tiny whispering sound. When he heard this, Elijah hid his face in his cloak and went and stood at the entrance of the cave. The Word of the Lord.
second reading. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I speak the truth in Christ. I do not lie. My conscience joins with the Holy Spirit in bearing me witness that I have great sorrow and constant anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites. Theirs the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. Theirs the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, is the Christ, who is over all God blessed forever. Amen. The Word of the Lord. How to Walk with God Maybe you have heard this expression, walking with God, walking with one another, uh, very often during these past uh, weeks or even years because of the call of Pope Francis to the whole church to be more synodal, to walk together with each other and with God. And I thought that our readings for today would also provide for us, uh, could provide for us, an important insight, spiritual insight, on how we could walk with God. Because even if we desire it, let us face it humbly. It is not always easy to walk with God. How do we walk with God, especially in the fulfillment of God's mission for the world? In the first reading from the first book of Kings, we have this great prophet, Elijah. Great in his mission, but also great in his suffering. This passage that we just read uh, is, is Elijah's response to the negative things that he had experienced as a prophet. In fact, his life was in danger. The queen Jezebel just plotted to kill him. He was no good for them. He was disturbing <laughs> the peace of the land, which meant he was disturbing the machinations of the powers that be. And El Elijah knew that. As a human being, he escaped. He did not want to walk anymore with God in God's mission. He wanted just to be left alone and to die, to die. But the Lord continued to sustain him, feeding him, you know, and encouraging him to go on a journey. But he would do the journey, but as a way of escaping from God. Now we find him in a cave, taking refuge in a cave on the Mount of Horeb, which is also the Mount of Sinai taking refuge, but he was told that the Lord would pass by. Now, that would be a scary, a frightening moment. You are escaping from God, yet God will pass by. But Elijah sort of expected also the coming of the Lord. How could he escape from God? But where was the Lord? First came a heavy wind, but the Lord was not there. Then came an earthquake, the Lord was not there. Then came fire, and the Lord was not there. Then came a soft, whispering wind, and Elijah covered his face and stood at the entrance of the gate. The Lord is passing through. This gentle, sweet caress, consoling him, assuring him. He has had a lot of earthquakes, fire, and wind from his enemies. Now, the Lord walks with him through a gentle caress 
and Elijah continued to walk with him. St. Paul, in the second reading, changed course. He used to be a Pharisee by training, but with an encounter with the Lord, he changed his ways. And he walks as an apostle to the Gentiles, but hoping and praying for his people Israel, walking without abandoning his own people. This is how God walks, assuring you, caressing you in moments of difficulty. The Proclamation of the Holy Gospel According to Matthew After he had fed the people, Jesus made the disciples get into a boat and precede him to the other side, while he dismissed the crowds. After doing so, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When it was evening, he was there alone. Meanwhile, the boat, already a few miles offshore, was being tossed about by the waves, for the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, he came toward them walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. At once, Jesus spoke to them, Take courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter said to him in reply, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. Peter got out of the boat and began to walk on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw how strong the wind was, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught Peter and said to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? After they got into the boat, the wind died down. Those who were in the boat did him homage, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. How to walk with God. As I said at the beginning of our reflection, this is an important theme, uh, especially as we, as a church, are invited to the synodal process, walking together with each other, walking with God. But it is easier said than, than done. <laughs> no? And we see in our readings for today how God continues to encourage us to walk with Him, especially in moments when we, almost decide not to walk with him anymore. That was the experience of Elijah in the first reading. You know, his life was in danger. His mission was almost like a failure. So he didn't want to walk with God anymore. He was escaping. And he ended up in that mountain of Horeb in a cave. And God passed by. Not through a wind, heavy wind, not through an earthquake, not through fire, but through a sweet caress, like a whisper. And that was enough to encourage, to encourage uh, uh, Elijah to walk again with God, the gentle caress of God. God will not force you. God will not overburden you. No. And uh, it is, he, he seems to be saying, yes, the mission is, is difficult, but I walking with me will be like a consolation for you. My presence is a consolation for you. St. Paul experienced the same thing. No, he changed course. He followed Jesus. He became the apostle to the Gentiles. But he brings in his new journey in obedience to God, his people, Israel, no? and uh, 
he brings them in his journey to God in hope that they would always be blessed. Now, in the gospel, after the feeding of the 5,000 men, not counting the women and the children, Jesus asked his disciples to pre precede him to the other side of the sea. So to go ahead. Now this is an, an image of mission. The disciples being sent on mission. And the boat is the image of a church on mission. A, a, a church on the way being sent by Jesus. And where was Jesus? Why did he tell them to precede him, to go ahead of him? He went to the mountain to pray. So these are important missionary movements. Jesus in communion with God, walking with God in prayer, and the disciples at the command of Jesus moving to the other shore. Then came a heavy, strong wind, you know, that tossed, uh, creating waves that tossed the boat. And they were far from the, uh, from the original shore, but also far from the shore that they should reach. And that caused panic. Imagine the panic of Elijah. Imagine the panic of the early Christians as they were being sent by the Lord. And where was the Lord? Now, the Lord who was in communion with the Father, the Lord who is walking with the Father in prayer, sees them and quietly walks towards them. Let us not forget this. It is Jesus who comes to us. It is Jesus who walks towards us, walking on the water, showing us his supremacy over all the forces that might be disturbing our journey. But he appears like a ghost. <laughs> and so Peter almost challenges the Lord. If it is really you, let me walk towards you. Let me walk also over the waters going to you. And Jesus invites him, yes, come to me. And as Peter was focused on the Lord, he was able to walk over the turbulent seas. But when his focus shifted to the winds, the waves, the dangers, and away from the Lord, he sank. Look at that. If we fail to walk with the Lord, meaning our gaze with Him, towards Him, walking with Him, first by fixing our eyes on Him, we will sink. But don't be disturbed. You can cry out to the Lord and His hand will pull you. This is how to walk with the Lord. That is called faith. Faith. Believing that he is the one who comes to us so that we can walk towards Him. And when we fail to focus on Him, do not be afraid. His hand is there to lift us up. Faith, that's how to walk with the Lord. The Word has been exposed. Let us now fulfill it. Catechism teaches us that faith is already the beginning of eternal life. This is verified in the experience of Abraham, who because of his faith in God expressed through obedience, became the father of many nations and believers. Today let us turn to a descendant of Abraham, Mary, the most perfect embodiment of faith in God through obedience. The Catechism tells us, Thank you. 
Now, aside from Mary's ascent to the good news announced by the angel Gabriel, her fiat, her canticle of praise also expresses her faith in God. Mary's Magnificat articulates what she knew of God. To those who fear Him, He has mercy. He lifts up the lowly. He fills the hungry with good things. He helps His people Israel according to His promise to Abraham. We now understand how Mary's knowledge of God and His promise led to her response to the angel. By carrying the Son of God in her womb and bringing Him into the world, she would cooperate in the fulfillment of God's promise, the Messiah that she and the rest of the people Israel had been waiting for. That's why Mary was interested in the logistics, as it were, of her role. How can this happen? What shall I do? I have no relations with a man. The angel said that she would conceive through the power of the Holy Spirit. We do not know if that was a clear enough answer for Mary. Yet, despite the complexity of the conversation and the situation, Mary, like Abraham, assented and obeyed because she believed. And believing, she hoped. Mary would continue believing, assured and convinced of the things she cannot see, the wisdom and heart of God throughout her life. Like Abraham, Mary's faith expressed through obedience was deliberate rather than left to chance. There was a desire to cooperate with God and to participate in His saving plan. It was grounded in what she knew and believed about God. Lord, grant us the faith that you have given to the Blessed Virgin Mary. Amen. We have prepared reflection points for you. Please share them with your companions. What events or factors discourage us from walking with the Lord? Ano ang mga nakakasira ng ating puso para maglakad kasama ang Panginoon? The second point is, how can we strengthen the faith of our youth so that they could walk with Jesus? Paano natin mapapalakas ang pananampalataya ng mga kabataan para maglakad sila kasama si Jesus? Heavenly Father, You have blessed this humble program with a decade of mission on air. You have gifted it with the talents, hard work, and financial support of many generous people so that as your word is exposed, many more may know, love, and serve Jesus. Lord Jesus, be with us always, your production staff and partners, your viewers and benefactors, that we may not run out of courage, zeal, and charity in fulfilling our mission daily. And when our limitations and weaknesses surface, Please ask the Father to send the Holy Spirit to purify us and set our hearts on fire with renewed faith, hope, and love, so we may serve you for many more years to come. Amen. Friends, thank you for your company. We pray that the Word of God would find fulfillment in your life and His blessings be always upon you. And we hope you could be with us again next Sunday here on The Word Exposed. Awesome.